Okay, so we've covered the basics of outbound, other than actual tax returns. Let's talk about inbound. That is foreign persons with U.S. income or business. The first step is to determine whether the person is a resident or not. We talked about this earlier. Non-residents are taxed on U.S. wages and business income. It's different for other income, like that's shown here on the screen. The tax is a flat rate of 30% with no deductions allowed. Non-residents must pay tax on wages earned in the USA. They have to pay income tax and social security tax on that income. But if the employee's work is partly in and partly out, then the wages must be allocated and apportioned. Generally, this is done based on the ratio of days worked in the US or the state to total days worked during the year. Employers, whether they are U.S. or non-U.S., are also subject to withholding of income tax and Social Security tax on U.S. wages. That's a topic for another course. Anyone, individual or corporation, who does business in the U.S. has to pay U.S. income tax on the net profits from that business. That includes partners in partnerships. Whether something is a business is based on all the facts and circumstances. Generally, for it to be a business, the activity has to be regular, continuous, and substantial. There are well over a thousand court cases on this issue, and most of these have nothing to do with international. Rental activities can be a business or not, depending on the level of the taxpayer's activity. Non-residents get to elect to treat a rental activity as a business, so this issue isn't usually critical for us international guys. The other key requirement here is that the business must be conducted at least in part in the US. Again, this is based on facts and circumstances. For information on how the states tax business, see my book Income Tax in the USA, which has an appendix at the end covering allocation and apportionment for the states. A key additional provision in the international rules is the requirement that somebody paying income other than business income to a non-resident must withhold federal income tax from the income. This tax is a final tax for everything but wages and business income, and there's no need for the non-resident to file a tax return since the person doing the withholding is required to file it. The tax is a flat rate of 30% unless the tax rate is reduced by a tax treaty. States don't have a similar rule except relating to wages. If the payor doesn't withhold the tax and pay it to the IRS, he or she becomes personally liable for the tax. This means it's really important to determine whether you're required to withhold tax. A person who has custody of the money and can control paying or not paying the amount to the non-resident is required to withhold the tax and pay it to the IRS. Such a person is called a withholding agent. The withholding agent can face severe penalties of 100% for failing to withhold and pay over. There can be more than one withholding agent and every one of them is responsible for the whole amount. The amounts withheld have to be paid to the IRS quickly sometimes in as little as three days. When a person receives a payment from which tax has been withheld, that person is considered to have paid the tax. After year end, the payor must provide the payee a Form 1042-S or W-2 showing the amount of income and tax withheld. These are considered a tax receipt, so the non-resident may be able to claim a credit in his home country. There's also a fairly new set of provisions called FATCA, F-A-T-C-A. These require foreign banks and brokerages to withhold U.S. tax on payments to U.S. residents. There are some other incidental effects. Now, here's the next quiz.
Partnerships are not themselves subject to tax. Only the partners are subject to income tax at the federal or state level. The partners are taxed on their share of the partnership income, as if they had earned it themselves. The source and type of income stays the same. In addition to regular withholding rules, partnerships are required to make advance payments of tax for non-resident partners. This applies at the federal level and for many states. The partnership must make the payment, even if it has not distributed the income to the partner. It may be subject to penalties if it doesn't make the payments. The tax paid by the partnership is treated as if it were a distribution to the partner, followed by a payment of tax by the partner. For business income, including rental income, the payments must be made quarterly. These are computed at the top tax rate for the type of partner. For interest, dividends, royalties, annuities, etc., payments are made when the income is distributed or after year end. The 30% federal tax rate applies unless the partner has provided the partnership with a form W-8-B-E-N claiming a lower treaty rate.